Welcome, my friends, to the Be a Paid Speaker Now podcast. I'm Deborah Darris, your host. Each week, you'll hear from top experts in the speaking industry who will share their insider secrets. Learn what works and what doesn't by hearing real stories of success and failure. My intention is to be your speaking coach to help you reach your goals faster and easier. I believe you are the messenger for the message. So thanks for tuning in and let's get to another episode of the Be a Paid Speaker Now. This episode is being brought to you by the Be a Paid Speaker Now Online Academy. If you are an expert that is ready to get paid for your expertise, if you are a professional that's been in your field for over a decade or two and ready to monetize your skills and talents. The Be A Paid Speaker Now Academy has all that you need step-by-step to learn what you need to do to get paid to speak. Whether you want to do an online self-study program, a group mastermind program, or a VIP with private coaching with Deborah Darris, you get all of this at the Be A Paid Speaker Now Academy. Just register at Be A Paid Speaker Now Dot com. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our podcast. Due to overwhelming response, I am going to be doing the talk today. Yes, that's right. You have your very own host as the speaker for today. And I am going to be talking about a subject you all want to know, how to get more repetitive and consistent speaking gigs. Whether you're new to speaking or have been out there speaking, you know one of the things that's the most important thing in our industry is consistent work. Unlike other industries where you get a gig and then you have that contract and it's security, in the speaking world, you can go from feast to famine if you don't set up your business the right way. And I did say business. The speaking business is a business. So if you're not marketing or do not have a business plan or strategy, then you're going to hope and dream and wish, but you're not going to have the income you want to live the abundant life that you desire. And guess what? That you deserve. So I'm going to share with you some of the frequently asked questions, and also a lot of what I cover in the Be A Paid Speaker Now program. So it can give you a little taste of what to expect if you join us in the Be A Paid Speaker Now Academy Mastermind groups. So the first thing that people always want to know is how do you get booked in the first place? Where do you get these speaking engagements? And as you've heard me say before, I always say clarity is cash. You need to know what you're an expert in and own that lane, whether it's leadership, productivity, et cetera. But once you do that, the next step, which I call our calling card, our claim to fame, is to niche your niche. You've all heard the phrase niche and grow rich. Well, what I mean when I say niche your niche is it's not enough just to be an expert in a certain area. You want to pick an industry that you can dominate. So for example, I speak on peak performance. My favorite audience is human resource managers, and I speak to them on how to optimize their efficiency so they can have more innovative, more creative, productive workforces that thrive. Their workplaces will thrive as having me in it. And that's my niche. But then I take a niche within that and I think Latina professionals. So Latina professionals have always been the ones to bring me in, whether it was State Farm, New York Live, Procter & Gamble, et cetera. So I speak to organizations that have a lot of Latina professionals and are looking for a Latina speaker that reflects that. So do you see how I niched my niche even the niche of the niche. So um, my expertise is peak performance. The people that I speak to are HR managers and the people within that are Latina professionals. So I speak a lot in South Florida. I speak a lot in New Mexico. I speak a lot in Arizona. You may be thinking, wow, you're really limiting yourself to be in that niche. Nope. 
Not really. In fact, I'm not limiting myself. I am being found and discovered where other people are not because if I was just doing peak performance, then I would be competing with Tony Robbins and uh, Brendan Burchard and those kind of people that have huge budgets. This way, when I say I am the top peak performance Latina speaker for your HR organization, for your busy professionals, I'm the one, right? There really isn't a lot of competition when I'm niching the niche of the niche. And this is something that I can help you if any of you need coaching on how to discover your niche, how to know what organization will pay you for that niche, and how to niche within that niche. I'm going to have someone on my podcast who's been out there speaking, uh, was a professor, and I actually encouraged him to go out there and speak, and he's been speaking specifically to Hispanic uh, employee resource groups and speaking on how to recruit and retain. That niche has had him speaking ever since he started nonstop, able to replace his university salary, and you're going to meet him because he's going to be on our show coming soon, so make sure. You subscribe to get notified. So how do you get repeat business? Okay, you've, you've got the speaking engagement because clarity is cash. You have your calling card. Uh, you know your claim to fame. You've niched your niche, your niche. Next step is how do you keep getting that consistent bookings? How do you have those consistent speaking engagements? Well, the first thing you need to do is when you're speaking, you need to Give 111%. Not 100%. You want to give even more. And I've seen speakers do it, like Rhonda Britton, Lisa Nichols, Tony Robbins, Les Brown. They leave nothing on the table. They literally drop the mic. Blood, sweat, tears, body, soul, naked with their soul. They just totally pour out all that they have energetically. And they give all the information, they're not holding back on their content and trying to upsell. And on top of that, they're usually giving some sort of a bonus gift. And I'm going to talk about the strategy with the bonus gift. But to get repeat business, you want to give 111%, more than they bargained for. You want to be easy to work with so that you're not that diva person that's like, I need to have a town car with yellow jelly beans, etc. It's okay to ask for certain things, like if you need to be there the night before, if you need to have certain accommodations, but don't be high maintenance, right? So give 111%. The other thing that you need to do is you need to have a system to stay in touch with your audience. When I say system, I mean like a CRM, a client relationship management system. So whether you're using Salesforce or HubSpot or Trello or whatever it is that works for you, you could use Excel if you want to. That's a little more tedious, but when you're just starting out, but you want to be able to keep track of every single name, phone number, email, organization, address, zip code, fax machine, whatever, everything of the person that hires you. And just so you know, over the years, these people will change. So that's why it's important to keep in touch with these people on a regular basis. But it's so much easier to market to people that already love you. Uh, there was an organization, uh, Minnesota State University. I think I spoke to them four or five times, just kept coming back and back and back. Social Security Administration, Hispanic Association, kept going back and back and back. Once you wow them, they know that you can deliver and they have different people that are coming in. So they want to be able to give them an opportunity to get a piece of you. So you definitely want to keep remarketing and sharing your information to the people that can benefit from you. Very, very, very important. So you want to make sure that you do that. The other thing that's so important to do is to get them on your email list. And when I say email list, I'm not talking about Gmail. I'm not talking about Yahoo. I'm talking about your constant contact MailChimp AWeber. I personally use AWeber, although I find MailChimp to be a little easier, frankly. However, you can, as long as you use something and you're doing at least a monthly email campaign, it's really important. How I booked a lot of repeat engagements when I first started out 
is I would do a weekly newsletter. I was good at that time, but people were a lot less overwhelmed with email back then. It was in the early 2000s. And I would have a calendar of events on every email sharing with people where I was speaking. I would let them know where I was speaking. And because they saw that I was speaking quite a lot of places, it enabled me to get booked and rehired because they're like, wow, look, she's speaking here, she's speaking there. Because just like if you were looking to hire someone for a job, you would want someone that's already working. And hiring somebody for speaking, you want someone that's out there because it's social proof that they can get the job done, obviously, because they're speaking. You see them doing it. Good. So you want to make sure you have a CRM. You want to make sure you have an email list and a compelling reason for them to get on the email list. Why should they join your list? For example, I'm giving a speech on mindfulness and how to create an efficient workforce. So everyone in that audience, I'm teaching them mindfulness techniques, but it's very likely that they could forget. So what I'm giving away is a video where I'm leading them in mindfulness techniques that they could do anywhere, anytime. Of course, people want that, right? So I'm going to give them that. Other times, people want to have like a PowerPoint of the presentation. You could give a PowerPoint. People want to have that as well, right? So you want to make sure that they get on your email list right away that they do not hesitate, that while they're in the room with you, while they're engaged with you, while they like you, while you're wowing them, get them to do it right now. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has Wi-Fi in the hotel. Have them take it out. Make it something really easy. If you can have it on a piece of paper in front of them or on the big screen, if you're doing a PowerPoint, make it as easy as possible and get them to opt into your email list. Some people do text opt-ins, which I don't really love, but you could do that as well. And the bottom line is you want to give them something they want or need, get them on your email list, and then on a regular basis, not overwhelming, but once a month, once, twice, twice a month, give them something that they will value so that you're at the top of their mind. Next, when you're connecting with your audience, you want to make sure that you show them that you care about them. Not just that you care about their work life. I have found that it helps that you care about all of their life, their personal life as well. Because usually what you're talking about will benefit them in their personal life. But people don't care who you are until they know that you care. So how do you show them that you care? You're aware of their pains and problems. You're conscious of the frustrations that they have. You're empathetic to all the stuff they have to deal with on a daily basis. And you mention it in your presentation. And they know that you know that they've got these issues. And they also feel that you care about solving their problems, that you really care about their their life and that it's going to be improved. So I really make an effort to do that. And I find I have a lot more rapport because people like people that like them and that are like them. So if you show them how you care about them, both personally and professionally, they're going to be more interested in you and what you have to offer. The other thing that I do to connect with my audience is I arrive early and stay late. If you are speaking at an engagement, I always try to come the night before. There's an opening reception. I meet, mingle, um, get to connect with people, get to know people, what their pains, problems are, what their needs are. I stay late because usually if you come before, people will be interacting with you. But after is when you're going to be that superstar where they're going to really want to know um, how they can bring you in to speak to their department or another organization or another association. So it's really, really important. And don't just get their card if they say they're interested in you. Uh, don't just give your card, get their card. Because remember, you need to put everyone in your client relationship management system. The speaking business is a business. Unless you have their information, it's not a contact, it's not a lead, it's just a conversation. And as speakers, we're also marketers. So it's not just enough to make friends. We have to influence people by getting them into our world and by connecting with them 
on a regular basis. So you want to put their card, put their information in your client relationship management. I usually like to write on their card the date I met them, the conference I met them, because usually when you're on tour, there you get a lot of cards and you want to remember each person, maybe what you talked about, what gig they were interested in, and follow up. Usually they forget about you within 48 hours. <laughs> hate to say it. Um, maybe they won't. Maybe for you, they'll remember. But most people, they'll forget about you within 48 hours. So follow up and follow up fast. Don't give them time to forget you. And then the next thing you want to do is have them keep you on the top of their mind. How? Newsletter is one or a couple times a month sending updates. Another one, podcast. Here I am with the podcast. Another one, YouTube um, channel. You can have a YouTube channel with videos that give them more content than just what you, were, what you were talking about when you were speaking. So they can really learn and grow with you. And on those YouTube videos, of course, you can upsell to a membership program or upsell to online trainings or upsell to whatever other um, things interest you or that you're offering. Also, your social media posts. Your social media posts should be solving the pain or problem that the niche of your niche of your niche has. And this is why it's so important to pick that niche because you can't solve everybody's problems, but you can solve the problem of that niche. You could also write a blog or a white paper. Whatever it is that your ideal target market reads or consumes, that's where you want to be. So in order to make your audience your sales staff, you want to make sure that in your speech that you're seeding stories, you're seeding ways that they can work with you further. Lisa Nichols, oh, Les Brown. I think Les Brown coached Lisa Nichols. They're masters at this. Also, Robert Allen, Mark Victor Hansen. If you ever listen to them speak, they weave into their stories how you can work with them. And I've created a formula for this. You want to hear my formula? It's called SAR. S-A-R. And star sa SAR stands for Situation, Action, Result. So for example, say I'm selling my Be A Paid Speaker Now Academy. I could talk about somebody that I coached that was in the academy. You know, they had never spoke before, didn't even graduate from high school. Within a few weeks of being in the program, they were able to book their first $1,500 keynote and second $5,000 keynote just from having the tools in the workshop. So situation, action, and as a result, their speaking career began and it was all because they participated in this program. So do you see that? Situation, action, result. You want to seed, not in a selling way, but in an informational way. Maybe you offer consulting. So in your story, in your speech, you could say, you know, when I was a consultant for this company, this was their issue and their problem. I help them generate an increase of revenue and a decrease of expenses by this amount. And as a result, they were able to go to the next level in their company, right? So you want to do the SARS, not just at the end, but throughout your presentation so that people know how they can get hired by you. So there's so much more that I want to share with you. Um, on how you can continue to get repetitive gigs. But the most important thing that I've learned in the speaking business, being in it now 17 years, is it's not the best speaker that gets booked. It's the person that's the most proactive, the person that's the most visible, the person that's the one that asks for the speaking engagement. There are so many talented speakers. And I know a lot of educators, a lot of professors that are excellent at what they do. They're so knowledgeable. They're so great at presenting. But if you're not good at marketing your business, no one's going to hire you to speak. You need to be able to have the capacity to reach out to businesses and let them know that you are the answer for their problem, that you're able to give them what they need to be able to help them in whatever pain or problem that they have, that you are that answer. So it's so important to do that. And you do that in your social media as well. 
make sure you listen to my previous episode on how to use social media to build your community because that's going to really help you to book gigs. There's so many organizations online that are looking for talent and you just need to position yourself to be that. So thanks so much. I really appreciate you tuning in and listening. If you have questions or comments on this, feel free to reach out to me. You can go to debradaris.com uh, or you can um, text me your question at 310-945-5651. If you have a suggestion for a topic for the future or if you have just questions that you want me to answer on another show, make sure that you let me know, debradaris.com or 310-945-5651. Remember, you are the messenger for the message. And with the power of synergy, anything is possible. Thanks for listening. If you would like to receive a free ebook on how to speak with confidence, you can get it at debradaris.com slash speak now. You can also listen to previous episodes of our podcast at debradaris.com slash podcast. And remember to subscribe and write a review on our channel. We want to hear from you and what you would like to hear more of. 